All right, let's get this episode of Fill in the Blank in the Books. Hell I'm here yeah. with Christopher Rourke. What's good? My charming companion that doesn't wake up until late because he is fasting and his body is trying to not kill itself. Yeah, dude, working till 2 a.m. also doesn't help anything. Yeah, because what's, <laughs> what's the best time to eat is like at 2 a.m. Dude, I eat until 12. It's uh, 4 to 12. Okay, this is not a fill in the blank on your fasting. This is a fill in the blank on the Phoenix program. Well, we should do that soon. We will. But what's the Phoenix program, Chris? Um... You know, you told me not too long ago, but I've never done any research onto it, so I'm very excited to hear. Well, the Phoenix program, it was actually a word related to Feng Yang, the Chinese Phoenix. It was a program designed and coordinated by the United States Central Intelligence Agency, also known as the CIA, during the Vietnam War, involving cooperation between American South Vietnamese and Australian militaries. The program was designed to identify and destroy the Viet Cong via infiltration, torture, capture, counterterrorism, inter, 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 interrogation, and assassination. The CIA described it as a set of programs that sought to attack and destroy the political infrastructure within Viet Cong. Mm. So the Phoenix had its roots in psych psychological warfare and police counterterrorist operations. Also, it employed methods such as the use of wanted poster, blacklists, uh, uh, specs and disguises as well as violent acts of um, intimidation and terrorism. The PRU, it's an indiscriminate and brutal methods to gather information that was riddled by inaccurate reporting and bribery, which you're going to hear about through this article. So the major, so this is its history. The major two components of the program were provisional reconnaissance units, which are known as PRUs, which like I said before, it, they use brutal methods to gather information. Mm-hmm and regional interrogation centers. PRUs would kill or capture suspected VC members, the Viet Cong, as well as civilians who were thought to have information on Viet Cong activities. Many of these people were taken to interrogation centers and were tortured in an attempt to gain intelligence on the Viet Cong activities in the area. The information extracted at the centers was given to the military commanders who would use it to task the PRU with further capture and assassination missions. The program's effectiveness was measured in the member or the number of VC members who were neutralized, uh, a euphemism meaning imprisoned, persuaded to defect, or killed. Mm. So already, do you think, what, what are your thoughts on the Phoenix program? So I'm just kind of confused as to how our government had so many programs like this, and, and we were at war with them, and we still lost to like win the hearts and minds of the Viet Cong. You know, man, I mean, we were out there trying to, you know, we were doing some pretty shady stuff in the wings, and I believe, like, we're not going to truly fully understand what our idea of thinking of it really was, yeah. even though we can say, oh, it was just a casualty of war, like, they mostly chalk it up to, but there's always something deeper, especially when you're torturing people for information. Yeah. The whole idea that you can look at somebody and just totally neglect the humanity of another person. There's some people like that <clears> in the world, though. And I'm sure they found him for this program. Well, the program was in operation between 1965 and 1972, and similar efforts existed both before and after that period. By 1972, Phoenix operatives had neutralized 81,740 suspected Viet Cong operatives, informants, and supporters of whom between 26,000 and 41,000 were killed. During the same 1965 to 1972 period, the Viet Cong killed 33,052 South Vietnamese village officials and civil servants. The interrogation centers and PRUs were developed by the CIA's Sajin Station Chief, Pierre De Silva. De Silva was a proponent of a military strategy known as counterterrorism which encompasses military tactics and techniques that government, military, law enforcement, and intelligence agencies use to combat or prevent terroristic activities. And that it should be applied strategically to enemy civilians in order to reduce civilian support for the VC. The PRUs were designed with this in mind and began targeting suspected VC members in 1964. Originally, the PRUs were known as counter-terrorism -ter teams, but then were renamed to the Provisional Reconnaissance Units after the CIA officials became wary of the adverse publicity surrounding the use of the word terror. Mm -hmm. So, 
it they were hiding this program, but at the same time, it's like they weren't. Like well, it's you, you it's can. it's been talked about before, so they just thought they'd give it a better name. Like you know, if I change the name of meth to uh, adrenaline flangelin, you're gonna be like, I'll take some adrenaline flangelin. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. Well, because also they want to be able to use that term terrorism in a positive note for them. You know, like they want to be able to say like, well, these people are terrorists, therefore we can do what we want. And if they ruin that by having some t terrorists of our own, <laughs> you know, it's not very, it's not you, very positive. Do you believe the word terrorism has changed through time from oh, when it first started? Dude, definitely. I feel like now if you do something really bad, you said it was to stop terrorism. It's like everyone agrees with you and says, oh, it's a, it's the right way of doing it then. It's the, the government created the New World Order um, after 9-11. Yeah, with Hulk Hogan and all of them. It, it, that was, it was meant to, uh, it was meant to, uh be able to say like okay so the patriot act right mm -hmm. if you're suspected of terrorism your your amendment your um constitutional rights can be violated at any time yeah it doesn't you matter. have to take your shoes off at the airport it doesn't matter as if you can be deemed a terrorist you will be and your rights will be taken away they definitely racial profile too for terrorism. oh yeah dude for mm -hmm. sure well in 1967 all pacification efforts by the United States had come under authority of the Civil Operations and Revolutionary Department support, or CORDS. CORDS have been used many different programs within it, including the creation of a peasant militia, which by 1971 had a strength of about 500,000. In 1967, as part of the CORDS, the Intelligence Coordination and Exploitation Program was created. From a plan drafted by Nelson Brickham, partly inspired by David Galuatia's Counterinsurgency Warfare of 1964. A book based on Galuatia's experiences in the Algerian War, which Brickham was very taken with and carried with him around Vietnam. The purpose of the organization centered on gathering information on the VC. It was renamed Phoenix later in the same year. The South Vietnamese program was called Phong Hiang after a mythical bird that appeared as a sign of prosperity and luck. The 1968 Tet Offensive showed the importance of a VC infrastructure, and the military setback for the U.S. made it politically more um, palatable for the new program to be implemented. By 1970, there were 704 U.S. Phoenix advisors throughout South Vietnam. So we just made a big presence, really. That's... What, what we always got to show off how strong we are, man. <laughs> so, in agencies and individuals in the program, which ones have we talked about that are, in, that are in it that we know? Well, the CIA created this agency. The CIA, the United States Special Operation Forces, mm. the U.S. Army Intelligence Collection Units from the U.S. Military Assistance Command, Vietnam, which is the MACV, the Joint Service Command that provided command and control of all the U.S. adversary and assistant efforts in Vietnam, um, special forces operatives from the Australian Army training team, and the Republic of Vietnam's South Vietnam Security Apparatus. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> that's a name and a half. So, our operations. The chief aspect of the Phoenix program was the collection of intelligence information. VC members would then be captured, converted, or killed. Emphasis for the enforcement of the operation was placed on local government, militia, and police forces, rather than the military. As the main operational arm of the program, author and journalist Douglas Valentine states that central to Phoenix is the fact that it targeted civilians, not soldiers. Mm. So they're basically not capturing VC soldiers as much, but they're capturing the civilians and trying to figure out which ones are secretly working yeah. in the Viet Cong works. Well, that and also the soldiers are probably brainwashed to never give information, whereas the civilians, if they see someone who's like in charge of the soldiers, the civilians are going to be much more likely to spill the beans about that than a soldier would. I don't think it's the civilians that were being in charge of the soldiers, but they were just looking for any Viet Cong to... No, I'm saying, like, the person who's head, who's, like, started the revolution of soldiers in that area, right? The civilians would be the ones to let, the, to know that. Oh, and to be give willing information, to, yeah, yeah. be willing to spill the beans compared to the soldiers. Where's your leader soldiers. at, type yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly, because the civilians, they don't care either way. They're like, I saw I'm them just at trying the to, supermarket. Yeah, like, I'm just trying to farm here, guys, like. 
So the Phoenix program took place under special laws that allowed the arrest and prosecution of suspected communists to avoid abuses such as a phony accusations for personal reasons or to rein in overzealous officials who might not be diligent enough in pursuing evidence before making arrests. The laws required three separate sources of evidence to convict an individual targeted for neutralization. That is a wonderful word. Neutralization. Neutralization. Yeah. Oh, well, where's Jim at? Oh, he's been uh, neutralized. Yeah. What does that mean? Like, uh, his memory's gone? No, he's dead. Yeah, he's gone. If he's a suspected here. VC member was found guilty, he or she could be held in prison for two years with renewable, um, another two-year sentence totaling up to six years. So according to the MACV Directive 381 over 41, the intent of Phoenix was to attack the VC with a rifle shot rather than a shotgun approach to target key political leaders, command, control elements, and activists in the VCI, which is known as the, v the Viet Cong infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So he heavy-handed operations such as random cordons and searches, large-scale and lengthy detentions of in innocent civilians, and excessive use of firepower had a negative effect on the civilian population. Really, I don't see that being a very positive influence. You're telling me running in there with guns and searching people, throwing them on the ground? Yeah, I figured firebombing a village would increase its growth. Right, wouldn't that just <laughs> produce more plants? Intelligence derived from interrogations was often used to carry out search and destroy missions aimed at finding and killing VC members. Wow. Okay, so let's talk about reported torture. Huh. No, this, of this is just the reported stuff. Though. This, is, <laughs> yeah, this is what they just decided to document because it must have been so interesting. So methods of reported torture detailed by author Douglas Valentine that were used at the interrogation centers included rape, <coughs> gang rape, mm -hmm. rape using eels, snakes, or hard objects, and rape followed by murder, electric shock. Um, it's also known as the Bell Telephone Hour rendered by attaching wires to the genitals or other sensitive parts of the body, like the tongue, um, the water treatment, the airplane in which the prisoner's arms were tied behind the back and the rope looped over a hook on the ceiling, suspending the prisoner in midair, after which he or she was beaten. Beatings with rubber hoses and whips and the use of police dogs to maul prisoners. So that's all we did to these random civilians. All the documented to get things. All the documented things. It seems like what else could you do that could be worse than raping somebody with an eel? Uh, people who can think about raping someone with an eel can think of much worse. Is it because they don't look like us? They're like a whole different race? It's that uh, whole objectified thing? Like the same reason why you can kill a cow or a chicken? Because I, I'm you're not, thinking that's probably what it is, but at the same time... there's definitely a race wall there, because I feel like if you were trying to kill another white man or something, mm -hmm. it would be probably a little bit of a struggle, or someone that looks similar to how you look. Well, you could but think since of them... They, they have a different skin color. We think of them as completely different. I think that's why slavery went so far, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like um, the whole... Viet Cong thing is probably you're right with that and it's it's harder to picture them with like a picket fence and a family because they're not living the American dream at the time plus I mean when you label somebody that's why they labeled them like racist terms like zipperhead and all that because it's easier just to call them names than people what kind of torture is rape that's, I don't know how I they, mean I understand that's torture but not, not just with snakes and stuff, but regular, like, and then gang, like... Yeah, who does it? Hey, Corporal John, why don't you come over here and help me uh, get my service medal by uh, gang, <laughs> ganging up on this girl. Like, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, I don't really understand. Well, but see, are they all females? That's the thing, too. I hope they're not raping other guys. Uh, well, I, I hope that they're not raping females, but I, I think they did. I hope they're not they raping did. anybody, but they did, so... <laughs> they did do that. <laughs> This one report was by military intelligence officer K. Barton Osborne reports that he witnessed the following use of torture. The use of insertion of the six inch dowel into the canal of one of my detainee's ears and then tapping through the brain until death. Till death? Yeah. I just stopped because I've experienced what it's like to have something go in your ear. 
So I was cleaning my ear with a Q-tip, and mm -hmm. someone opened up the door, and my arm was right by the door, and they opened it hard, and it shoved the Q-tip in my ear and popped my ear drum. Uh. Okay, this dude had the insertion of a six-inch dowel. Yeah, so that shit's sharp. So into the canal of his ear, so all the way in the ear hole, and then they tapped on it until it went through the brain until he was dead. Mm. And then the starvation of death in a cage of a Vietnam uh, Vietnamese woman who was suspected of being part of the local political education uh, in one of the local villages. Mm -hmm. And the use of electronic gear such as sealed telephones attached to both the women's vaginas and men's testicles to shock them into submission. Mm. The reported torture was carried out by South Vietnamese forces with the CIA and special forces playing a supervisory role. You gotta think whoever's heading, like the main head leader of these programs, the CIA and the special forces, maybe he was just into like torturing like sexually. I think so. I because think it like... seems like our, our, our range of torture really like, we dive into new realms it seems like when we have a different person that's running the program or running the, the whole idea. I think it's whatever their sick fantasy is at the time. Like, it's that's just, just how they get gonna... off. Yeah. By torturing Viet Congs with... Um, Shoving things in their ears and shoving things in different holes. Well, to be into bureaucracy enough to get into a position of power, you kind of have to have some sick fucking thing in your head, so, you know. <laughs> no wonder I happen. always get sick after eating uh, sushi or Chinese food. They're trying to slow, like, this is for that one time, the Phoenix program. Yeah. Shove the dowel through my uncle's ear. Mm -hmm. So, targeted killings. The Phoenix operations often aimed to assassinate targets or resulted in their deaths through other means. The PRU units often anticipated resistance in disputed areas and often operated on a shoot-first basis. Innocent civilians were also sometimes killed. William Colby claimed that the program never sanctioned the permediated killing of a civilian in a non-combat situation. And other military personnel stated that capturing VC members was more important than killing them. Mm. So they, they were like, we don't kill them unless we've been brought violence to us. We'd rather capture them, take them back, and then, you know, get our way with them. And then, you know, they ended up dying, like, yeah, an exactly. hour later. That's Yeah, I wonder why. Complications. So, kind of like shoving a dowel in someone's ear isn't healthy for them. <laughs> don't even get started about the eels. Yeah. Where did they get the eels? I mean, I guess they're... In Viet Congs. Yeah, well, plus they're um, they're the government, so they can get their hands on whatever they want, whatever they want. Just imagine if you had unlimited funding to do whatever you wanted all the time. I guess I could see where I'd do, probably do some pretty sick stuff. Yeah. I don't think most of it would involve torture. I think a lot of it would just involve, like, major drug trips or something. Mm. So Lieutenant Vincent Akamoto, an intelligence liaison officer for the Phoenix program for two months in 1968 and a recipient of the Distinguished Service Cross said the following. The problem was, how do you find the people on the blacklist? It's not like you had their address and their telephone number. The normal procedure would go to a village and just grab someone and say, where's Nguyen so-and-so? Okay, Nguyen's a last name for a Chinese Viet Cong person. Mm -hmm. My buddy that was on my podcast, podcast name was Alan Nguyen. <laughs> He's also Vietnamese. Relation. I, I don't know. I think half that area probably has the same last name. <laughs> half the time, the people were so afraid they would not say anything. Then a Phoenix team would just take the informant, put a sandbag over his head, poke out two eye holes so he could see, put the combo wire around his neck like a long leash, and walk him through the village and say, when we go by Nguyen's house, I'm already afraid of what the next line is going to be, scratch your head. Then that night, Phoenix would come back, knock on the door, and say, April Fool, motherfucker. Whoever answered the door would get wasted, as far as they concerned with whoever answered was a communist, including family members. Sometimes they'd come back to the camp with ears to prove that they killed people. Mm. So, with April Fools on the arrival. Yeah, right? April Fool, motherfucker. That is a beautiful saying to yeah. say when you open up the door and really... He, he thought of that one. Yeah. He yeah. really put time into saying, all right, I need a good thing to say when this door opens up. You know, like, your pizza's here, bitch. But no. Special delivery. <laughs> yeah, special delivery without any pepperoni. Pop, pop, pop. So the strategic effect. 
Between 1968 and 1972, Phoenix neutralized 81,740 people suspected of VC membership, of whom 26,369 were killed. A, a significant number of VC were killed, and between 1969 and 1971, the program was quite successful in destroying VC infrastructure in many important areas. By 1970, communist plans repeatedly emphasized attacking the government's pacification program and specifically targeted Phoenix officials. The VC also imposed quotas. In 1970, for example, the communist officials near Dao Nang in southern Vietnam instructed their assassins to kill 1,400 persons deemed to be government tyrants and to annihilate anyone involved in the pacification program. Several North Vietnamese officials have made statements about the effectiveness of Phoenix, according to William Colby, in the years since 1975. I have heard several references to North and South Vietnamese communists who state that in the mind, the toughest period that they faced from 1960 to 1975 was the period from 1968 to 72, when the Phoenix program was at work. The CIA claimed that through Phoenix, they were able to learn the identity and structure of the VCI in every providence. So what was the public in response to the legal proceedings? The Phoenix program was not generally known during most of the time it was operational to either the American public or American officials in Washington. One of the first people to criticize the Phoenix publicly was Ed Murphy, a native of Staten Island, New York, in 1970. Not Eddie Murphy. Uh, <laughs> There was eventually a series of U.S. congressional hearings in 1971 and the final day of hearing on the U.S. assistant programs in Vietnam. A former serviceman named K. Milton Osborne described the Phoenix program as a sterile, depersonalized murder program. I mean, that's a good name for it, considering yeah. that they had the best covering for it, calling it the U.S. assistance program in Vietnam. Let me assist you in a uh, death. Yeah, exactly. Or neutralization, I should say. Yeah, neutralization. That's the better term. <laughs> so, consequently, the military command in Vietnam issued a directive that re, uh, re altered that it had based the anti VCI campaign on South Vietnamese law and that the program was in compliance with the laws of the land of warfare. Like I said, seems like everything seems to be chalked up to just another casualty of war. Mm hmm. So former CIA analyst Samuel A. Adams, in an interview with the CBC News, talked about the program as basically an assassination program that included torture. A former Phoenix intelligence officer, Barton Osborne, in an interview broadcast in 1975, talked about the torture practices used by the Americans and detailed a case in which a man was dragged out of the interrogation hooch with a dow protruding from his ear. The dow had been tapped through in the course of the torture to hit the brain. There were activities performed by American Marines. Um, they would also kill people by throwing them out of helicopters to threaten and intimidate those who wanted to be interrogated down below. Mm -hmm. I've you heard about throw that throw people one. out of a helicopter. Yeah. So so you're taking make a, a nice statement. stroll yeah. with your yak, farming some rice or something... And then next thing you know, Jim from accounting falls down and hits the <laughs> ground right in front of you. It's scary shit, man. And the one thing that's going through that guy's mind is now I'm not going to get my lawnmower back because <laughs> Jim's dead now and I don't know where the key to his shed is. <laughs> so abuses were common in many instances. Rival Vietnamese would report their enemies as VC in order to get the U.S. troops to kill them. In many cases, Pongyang chiefs were incompetent bureaucrats who used their positions to enrich themselves. Phoenix tried to address this problem by establishing monthly neutralization quotas, but these often led to fabrications or worse, fake arrests or fake deaths. In some cases, district officials accepted bribes from the VC to release certain suspects. After the Phoenix program, abuses became, began receiving negative publicity. The program was officially shut down, although it continued under the name Plan F6 within the government of South Vietnam in control. So with all this being said, what is your takeaway from the Phoenix program? Do you believe it was something we had to do? Um, do you believe that they definitely took super drastic measures to try and get what they needed to get in an area that they felt like they couldn't, didn't have to respect because they didn't look the same? Yeah, I just, I feel like it's... Um 
like taking away a human element to the United States once again. <laughs> like it's definitely. Uh, it seems like we don't have any humanity when it comes. Yeah, to... Yeah, exactly. So it's it's mainly like dehumanization of our own country because who can do that and still sleep at night? Apparently, the CIA officials can, but um, I have to respect the fact that uh, like the once it started coming out. Like it being public, a lot of people were like, "That's not right." Like there were, there's some mm-hmm. these other people out there that were like, you, "You, you, guys are being very sick. What you're doing, you need to wake up and realize." Like, yeah, exactly. Even though the program's still active in South Vietnam, it uh, it just it's nice to know that America's like, "All right, we've we've been uh, yelled at enough." Okay, they scolded us enough about what we were doing, and I think we see the error of our ways. But well, that's that's like what the whole hippie movement was about. Really, is like they they did like the peace and love thing because they knew shit like this was going on. You think they knew exactly like there were some informants that were like, hey, this this is program where people are getting uh, dowels shoved well, in their I, ears. I'm sure as soon as it came out into the news, everyone knew about it. And then the people who were already anti-war, it was fueling them to say like, look at this, everyone. Like, we need to get the fuck up out of here. <laughs> like, get out of Vietnam. Well, do you feel like you could torture something that didn't look like you? Like, if it was no, well, it was so different in ways, like, characteristics? Like, if it had a no, different because, skin color? No, because would you picture yourself torturing a lion? You, you know, like... I don't I, know. I, I couldn't torture an animal. You know, so what, I what would I believe you make... probably have tortured an animal. How so? Goldfish? No. Did you ever neglect feeding a goldfish? I never owned fish, because I knew I wouldn't be able to Did you to ever feed step them. on a worm? Did yeah, you ever I step stepped on, on a spider? A mm-hmm. Okay, what's the difference between crushing a spider out of hate and what they were doing? I don't crush him out of hate. I try to, like, let him out and, like, if I fucking... You're telling me you're in the shower and a spider comes in, you're trying to let it out? I actually don't crush spiders in my house most of the time. Because you don't want it to die in your house? No, I just, like... Is it going to haunt you? I just normally, like, I'll, like, pick it up with, like, a fly swatter or something, like, throw it outside. What about killing a fly? I mean, flies are just, like, they breed like Exactly. Maybe that's how they think. Maybe the Chinese but like, breed like rabbits, so they can crush them. Yeah, easier. I guess so. But like, I don't torture a rabbit because they breed like rabbits. Rabbits are adorable. So I mean, yeah, I guess it's so all it's the whole idea of how it looks. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's all subjective. Well, I hope you uh, got a little bit educated on the secrets, uh, the little dirty dark secrets of the government. Yeah, it's pretty from gross. page seven of the dark secret handbook. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, anybody else that. Uh, found this a little bit weird and interesting at least the part about the eels if you don't find that interesting then you just need to go experience a little bit more about life <laughs> so um i definitely think you guys should take the time to look up the phoenix program and uh, let us know your thoughts um thanks again chris for being on the podcast and we'll get you on again soon oh yeah